Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Tryon, and welcome to our Threducation session as part of our grand opening of the homemade headquarters here in Kingston, Ontario. We have been busy all morning despite the snowstorm. Everyone said, oh, no one's going to come. Everybody came. We really appreciate uh, anyone who came out this morning, and we have a full audience today in house here to learn all about what thread aw yay we're so glad to have you guys isn't it so cool that we're you know in this space and able to do this now thank you for watching from home we really appreciate you tuning in too and if you have questions leave them in the comments leave them in the link we'll throw them up on the screen um, if you have questions here just let us know sarah's got the microphone and we'll come around we're going to be talking all about what thread to use for what job you know for years we've just been pulling whatever thread was in grandma's sewing basket out and putting it in the machine and going i don't know why my machine doesn't work and <laughs> oftentimes we blame our machine and really it's something as simple as changing out the thread based on what job you're doing, uh, changing your needle, uh, depending on what job you're doing, and or maybe changing your thread. Sometimes it should be one thread on the top and a different thread in your bobbin. These are some of the things that we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna bring in uh, Callista from Wonderful. Uh, she's joining us live now from Calgary. You're in Calgary, am I right? Yes, I'm in Calgary right now. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me today. And congrats on your grand opening. That's so exciting. Thank you so yeah, much. I, I told you the quilters would come despite the snow. You did. You you <laughs> predicted it. You knew that quilters were made of hardy stock. And it's not going to, in a little flurry, it's not going to hold them back. Exactly. Um, listen, we want to go through, we're stocked with Wonderfill downstairs in mm -hmm. the shop. We've been trying to tell people, um, you know what? Hey, what are you making? What is it that you're actually trying to do here? We just had a woman in a few minutes ago who was thread painting. Um, mm. And, you know, she was just using a 50 weight cotton. And we thought, hmm, how about try a 40 weight polyester? Or, you know, and, and she thought, oh, I never knew. Maybe it won't be so stiff. Or maybe put Invisifil or Deco Bob in the bobbin. Mm -hmm. And then it won't be quite like, you know, standing straight up like wood by the time she's done that thread painting. Because when you choose different thread, you know, based on what job you're doing, you'll get a different result. So Callista, why don't you um, start us off a little bit and tell us a little bit about, um, about your thread line and what we can expect. For sure. Well, first of all, I'm so glad that you are pushing that narrative forward as well, because I think a lot of people don't realize how much of an impact thread can make in your projects and oftentimes it's, it's really the last thing that quilters or sewers think about they're having fun choosing the patterns they're having fun choosing the fabrics and then they're like "Ooh, look at my machine but then they're like oh whatever thread and then like throw that on top <laughs> okay but, you know, just a minute let's get a hands up <laughs> if you're guilty of spending all this time and money on fabric and and then maybe just using whatever thread yeah <laughs> I mean it's we all do it we all do it for sure and it's and a lot of times people just think of thread as just like the color that they want rather than like really understanding and knowing the differences of all these different types of threads that are available and that's why at Wonderfill we focus so much on Threducation, you know, thread education, because it really makes such a difference to your project. And if you really think about it, at the end of the day, you have all these materials together, um, you spend all this time and money, and what's really holding your project together is the thread. You know, what you're putting into the project yourself is is the thread. So it really does matter so much. So we're gonna cover a bunch of things from basic uh, concepts to how everyone should just start approaching um, like what types of threads they should they should choose you know not just like what color but what technique and just kind of asking yourself these questions so then people really understand 
what types of threads they should really be choosing and and things like that. And I see that there's um, yeah, Deborah's saying it, that she finds it. You know, it just keeps breaking. Uh, she changed the kind. She changes the kind of thread, and it just keeps happening. So, mm -hmm. can we address that? That could also be your needle, Deborah. For sure. Oh, I love that you brought up the needle already because yeah. I was going to go into that. For sure, when you're um, playing with different weights of thread or different types of thread, it's always good to look up what type of needle is recommended because it makes a huge difference in like the, su the success of your sewing and your overall sewing experience if you're using the correct needle. As well, there's certain threads that you don't, that are more decorative that you do want to be a little bit slower with or you want to put with a thread stand or on a on a thread stand versus like a horizontal spool pin, things like that. Like for example, like the metallic that you're holding in your in your hand, I have like a lot of great tips about that because I know it's something that, you know, a lot of sewers they curse metallic, <laughs> let's be honest. We yeah. curse metallic. Yeah. <laughs> but what if you're wanting to use metallic? And I know we're kind of jumping right to metallic when probably yeah. we should start with cotton. Um, <laughs> but it, it, you know, we want to get to some using some of this cool, beautiful stuff. We actually don't want to always be stuck using cotton. So just quickly, you know, what are some recommendations that you have if we want to be using? Um, beautiful things like metallics for sure so the first thing I would say is like with metallic thread you definitely want to slow down your speed at least like 50 percent of what you're used to maybe you can like ramp back up from there but as a starting point you should go like maybe half your speed that you're used to because metallic thread does require a little bit more patience to work with it's beautiful so there's a little bit of a price to pay in that way so slow down everyone's I know got so much mm -hmm. experience and it's pedal to the metal but not with metallic and the other thing I would say is for sure use a larger eyed needle so what we recommend is something like a top stitch 9014 needle or a, a metallic needle they're actually the same needle they both have a large eye so either or you could show me purple tip needle um, for anyone that's using Janome machines, they mm -hmm. kind of color code them that way. So the Janome purple tip needle is great for that. Yeah, exactly. So just like you look for the larger eye, it just helps um, the metallic work a bit better. And the thing that people don't really know about is there's a concept called thread memory. So what does thread memory mean? It actually means like how well that thread is going to remember kind of like its shape when it comes off the spool. So for example, like metallic has the best thread memory. Yeah, because when you on if you drop it on the floor, you get like a slinky. And it's like all curly, right? Because it remembers huh. that it was, yeah. you know, in that shape for a long time. And so it kind of like generally stays with that curl. Whereas cotton has the worst thread memory, which is why actually a lot of people love cotton for that reason is because it just it really like straightens out and things like that so it's it doesn't get tangled up on itself before you put it in your sewing machine so with metallics it's good that you don't put metallic thread on your horizontal spool pin I actually recommend if you have thread stands to use a thread stand or sometimes as like a, a hack you can put it in like a cup and then before you like put it in your sewing machine just so it has like a little bit more space to like straighten out and it doesn't get twisted um, um, with itself before it goes into your sewing machine because like the distance between where it like gets taken into your sewing machine and the horizontal spool pin is really short and because metallic is slippery as well sometimes if too much slips off it's really easy for it to tangle with itself and the last thing is use a lightweight bobbin thread so a lot of times especially with embroidery, you have so much thread like packed onto one area. And you did touch on this point earlier, but using a lighter weight bobbin thread really reduces the bulk. So it has like less to go through. The overall um, embroidery is going to be softer. It also just like helps metallic a lot when you're not stitching through a lot of bulk. Mm -hmm. So um, those few tips is what I would kind of suggest. And you can take those tips right to the bank with many different kinds of thread. Uh, we have a question, um, someone's asking, um, do the uh, Wonderfill pre-wound bobbins work on the Janome M7 sewing machine? So that's like a, a, a non M class bobbin, um, like the smaller non long arm uh, pre-wound yeah, bobbin. You 
If your sewing machine takes a class 15 bobbin, then yes, it will work in the machine. Um, yeah. I don't, I mean, I think off the top of my head, I know almost every Janome takes a class 15, except yeah. the 1600P is the only the one that- The 1600P takes an M yeah. class bobbin, but you'll yeah. be just fine with a Janome M7 using the pre-wound bobbins. And I wanted to talk a little bit, yeah, about Deco Bob because it seems to be the word of the launch. We've been talking about <laughs> Deco Bob, Deco Bob, and we've sold out of white, black, gray, all the neutrals <laughs> we're bringing them more in we're bringing more in so people have been trying to get it online and in store i'm going to take the leap too and also start bringing in the pre-wound deco bob bobbins because um a they're already wound and they're in you know colors that we use all the time and talk a little bit about what deco bob is because you know sometimes we hear about thread weight and then we just go like what does that mean yeah. i cannot compute because <laughs> the number is bigger but the thread is smaller you know i have i have actually a really great example if we could just jump over to my powerpoint if sure. we can share that screen up is everyone able to see this yep okay perfect so this is a really good visual representation of thread weight. And I know a lot of people out there um, still don't know a lot about thread weight. And so we have this really great analogy to help remember thread weight. So as you can see, the lower the number, the thicker the thread. So you see like the eight weight, the 12 weight, those are the heaviest ones. And then you have on the other hand, the high, the really high numbers like 80 weight and 100 weight, and those are really fine. So it almost seems a little bit counterintuitive um, to see the thread weight like that. But we have this really great analogy called the Wonderful Sausage Theory. So you can actually look this up. We have a cute little animated video on our um, YouTube page. But essentially what the sausage theory is, is um, if you imagine having a barbecue, I know we're in a so snowstorm, so it might be a little bit hard <laughs> to imagine right now. But imagine you're hosting a barbecue and you have about a pound of meat, okay? You have a pound of meat and you have 10 guests coming over to your barbecue. So just picture if every guest you had to make them a sausage, how thick each of those sausages would be for 10 guests. Now, imagine you're hosting a barbecue again and word gets out on the street and suddenly 100 people are coming to your barbecue, but you still only prepared that one pound of meat. So you're going to have to really stretch out those sausages and make them real thin so that everyone can at least have one serving at your party. So then um, the higher the number, the thinner the sausages or the thread and the lower the number, the more everyone gets. So the thicker the sausages or the thread. So our, that's a great analogy. But are we worried that, I mean, the sausage still tastes the same. So is it still <laughs> strong enough? Is it still the same quality as you go up in the number? Yes, absolutely. So let's let's talk about thread weight for a, li a little bit. So you see we have like section one, section two, section three. I kind of like kind of grouped them for uh, specific reasons is because I think almost everyone in your audience right now is very familiar with 40 and 50 weight thread. Yeah, I'm this sure is like your regular cotton thread that everyone's like, oh, I don't know, just cotton. That's the 50 weight. And then I don't know, polyester. That's the 48. That's exactly. The 48. Yeah. Everyone's very familiar. That's where everyone's like used to using it. And I would say that's like your utility weight thread. It's normal weight. Okay. And now in group one is what I would consider like heavier weight threads. So you're going to see this thread more. And a lot of times these heavier weight threads, they're either thicker or they're shinier. And the reason is because if it's a bolder thread, you're obviously using it because you want to see it. So obviously it comes with qualities like, oh, it might be shiny or it just might be like a thicker thread. And you use these because you want to see them. They're heavier for a reason. You're not going to use a heavyweight thread and hope that you don't see it or you're using it to be like, this will make my seams less bulky. Like that just right. doesn't make sense. You're using them because you want them to be used in a more decorative capacity. And then on the other hand of the spectrum, we have um, 
the lightweight thread. So 60 weight, 80 weight, 100 weight. So these are fine threads. And again, the logic would work the same. Because they're fine, you're not going to see them as much. So you're going to be using them in a capacity where you don't want to see your thread as much. You're going to be using it in like stitch in the ditch or in your seams to reduce seam bulk or, you know, like EPP, um, micro quilting. You want to make it less dense, less heavy. Like these are the threads for that type of job and now people might be wondering like why do you have um or like are you worried about like what you mentioned the strength of the thread and a lot of the times you know it's not really how strong the thread it it is on its own like a lot of times i we get people that come um to our booth and things like that and the first thing they do when i give them that lightweight thread is they just want to like snap it right away to, to test how strong it is. But realistically, your thread strength will never be tested in that same way. So it's not a real test of how strong that thread is. But it's rather when you have lightweight threads, you can actually reduce your stitch length. So you get more stitches per inch. So you actually end up a lot of the times with stronger seams or with like a stronger hold using these lightweight threads because you're able to have less bulk, but have more stitches in one area, which actually makes it stronger or just as strong as using like a heavier weight thread, like a 50 or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and to talk about specifically Deco Bob, which is an 80 weight thread. So we can see it's on the lighter weight end of the spectrum. It's actually a cottonized polyester. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, I've never heard of that. Is it a cotton? Is it a poly? Like, what, what is it really? So to answer your question, it's 100% polyester thread. It's called a cottonized polyester because we treat the thread so it doesn't have any stretch. It's got a matte finish. Um, it's not going to... Uh, be affected by heat so you don't have to worry about it like puckering your seams if you iron it or wash it or dry it or anything like that and, and you might be wondering if you've made the thread look and behave like a cotton why didn't you just make an 80 weight cotton and to answer that question it's because the way cotton thread is made is with a lot of um fibers so you you know when you guys are shopping for cotton thread i'm sure you always see long staple egyptian cotton extra long staple egyptian cotton i'm sure you guys have seen seen those terms before right mm -hmm. and so even when we're talking about a long staple egyptian cotton the staples are really only maybe like an inch and a half two and a half inches two inches long like they're not super super long and so all these fibers are twisted together to make the thread so the more fibers you have to twist the cotton awesome. the stronger the cotton is going to be but if you're making a finer weight thread you're going to have to have less of these fibers so that the thread can be finer so at a certain point, it's just not possible to make such a fine weight cotton and still expect it to be strong. And so that's why we have to go to materials like the polyester so it can still give the strength or uh, the thread like integrity and strength. Um, but, but then you also get all sorts of bonuses when using it like no you know, lint, no lint. You know, so if you're getting a lot of lint buildup in the bottom of your machine or every other time you're working on something, you you're taking it out and you're kind of mm -hmm. scooping out spoonfuls of lint. This has to do with the quality of your thread. Yes, absolutely. So there's a lot of different ways to handle cotton in the in in the industry. And so, like I mentioned, cotton is made with, you know, staples of uh, staples of fiber of, uh, of Egyptian cotton fiber, right? The longer they have, they are, the less linty they're going to be, which kind of makes sense. Because if you think about if you have a pile of like short pieces of hair and you tried to twist it together, you can imagine how frayed and frizzy it would look mm -hmm. rather than like if you have longer pieces of hair and you twisted that together, you'd have like less pe uh pieces of hair flying away and things like that if you have longer hair right and the same concept works for cotton and then to deal with the lint there's different ways like there's like glazing the thread uh glazing the thread so the lint kind of sticks more to 
the thread. But what happens is when it runs through your machine, that can scrape off and things like that over time. And you still get lift with the lint problem. So at Wonderfill, what we do with all of our Egyptian cotton thread is we gas them. We actually double gas them like the confetti that you have in your store. So what we do is we burn off the lint twice. So we do it really gently. We do 80% the first time and it passes through a tunnel that's got some heat and it gently burns off the lint and we do it two times. So you get a really clean Egyptian cotton. But with cotton thread, there's no way to avoid lint completely. It's just part of the thread. It's a characteristic of the thread and that's just the reality of the situation. So it is kind of nice to have threads like Deco Bob where there isn't lint at all. And I know you're thinking about bringing in like the rest of the pre-wound bobbins and everything like that. I always tell people, it's not just the convenience of not winding your own bobbin, but it's how consistent the bobbins are wound. So you get perfect tension from them. So it actually gives you a better stitch result and better stitch quality compared to winding your own bobbin, which can vary in tension. We've just got some more people coming in. Come and sit down if you want. There's no problem yeah, at all. Everyone no join in. <laughs> uh, if anyone has any questions, let me know and we'll ask uh, Callista. Uh, we've got Marilyn online saying it's very informative. She's a newbie and she's learning so much and understanding so much about thread. If you're just joining us, we are doing a thread education session with Callista from Wonderful. She's joining us from Calgary and we are here at the new homemade headquarters in Kingston, Ontario, and we're talking all about thread. And we've got a little <laughs> studio audience here which is super fun we're passing around some samples of wonderful we've been giving out wonderful you're getting some in your goodie bags if you've come into the store today um, so all of you that uh, picked up a goodie bag you've got some wonderful in there um Calista, let's talk a little bit about quilting and piecing because it's the number one thing we're hearing from people that they want to use thread for and what i'm finding is you know it's sort of the number one uh like place where people could they're sort of stuck in a rut when it comes yeah. to piecing it's sort of the, the the when i'm thinking of all the people coming in and saying what they're using i'm like everybody's just using that 50 weight cotton and then getting these big lumpy seams and it doesn't have to be the way i'd love to show you a sample if we could jump back over to the slideshow sure. so this is a great example of piecing with a 50 weight top and bottom versus piecing with an 80 weight top and bottom so a lot of people are wondering, you know, how do I get my seams flatter? Like, what can I do? Do I press it more? Do I press it a certain way? And yes, things like that can help. But at the end of the day, if you think about what a seam is, it's your fabric and it's your thread. And if you can't change how much fabric you're putting in your seam, the only other thing is you can change your thread. So a lot of people don't realize that thread actually you know, affects your seam bulk. And by using a lighter weight thread, it really reduces, it can really reduce the bulk in your seams, as you can see in this example. And I've got another great example next. So starting on the very left hand side, you see we've really zoomed in tight, and we're using a 50 weight thread top and bottom. And we're really zoomed into the seams. And you can see a, a, prog a progression, you know, when we're moving to the middle photo, we changed our bobbin to our 80 weight deco bob bobbin. And you can see it's already made the seams noticeably flatter. And then we changed the top thread as well and go 80 weight on the top and bottom. And now you can really see across these three pictures how much flatter your seams can become when you reduce your the weight of your thread. And it, and it really reduces the bulk a whole lot. We did that exact demo or um, stitch out in the shop here, and we're just passing it around so people can feel, um, mm -hmm. especially if you open your seams, um, like you press your seams open, you really get the benefit of that reduced bulk by having that deco bob on top and at the bottom. We have a question um, mm -hmm. coming from Sue here. Go ahead, Sue. I was going to say about opening or closing your seams. Because like, I like so my seams and I like to iron them over. Right. But um, I know then you get a really certain, big lump. Yeah. But for certain things, I do open them like mm -hmm. your pinwheel pattern or whatever mm -hmm. that, that all your seams meet in the middle. So if I really want to, to fold them over, mm -hmm. it's, is it going to make that much difference? Is it going to make that much difference if, if they're folded over? 
It still makes a difference because if you're using like a 50 weight top and bottom versus using an 80 weight top and bottom, you still feel that no noticeably like less of a bump. Like well, you're reducing 30% on top and 30% at the bottom. Like exactly, exactly. You're still reducing your your thread by a lot. So you will still notice like that your seam bulk is less than using a 50 weight top and bottom. And the other great thing about using 80 weight besides the seam bulk, like that is a huge plus for sure. But when you use lighter weight threads like Deco Bob, um, let me see if I have an example here. You can actually reduce your stitch length because it's a finer weight and you still get less bulk than using a 50 weight. So imagine you're sewing a curve. So it's great for precision piecing. If you think about a stitch, it's a segment, it's like small straight lines, right? That create this curve. So if you are able to actually make those segments of straight lines smaller, which is reducing your stitch length, you can actually see the concept here that like your curves are going to be smoother when you have a smaller stitch length and and using a thread like deco bob really helps with that so curves just matching all your points and making sure your thread doesn't eat into your seam bulk or anything like that it's fantastic so not just for reducing your bulk but you're actually able to reduce your stitch length so you get more precision when you're piecing as well. And it's fantastic for something that's like um, foundation paper piecing because then you have shorter stitch lengths. It mm -hmm. perforates your paper better and it's like way easier to rip out as well. So um, And you can even go, go that much further when you're English paper piecing and go Invisifil 100 weight. Exactly. And I have some photos of that as well. So you can see these are some really small um, piecing samples. And if you imagine doing the same thing with an uh, 50 weight, you would actually have a very textured block because you would feel all those lumps and bumps of the seam. So this is what you're talking about. This is 100 weight. So this is the finest end of the spectrum. Um, it's great for what you mentioned, like English paper piecing. A lot of people use... Um, or have used silk, things like that before for English paper piecing. Um, and so they will come to us and be like, oh, do you have a silk thread? And we're like, no, we have something better. And it's called Invisifil because it's actually the same weight as silk. It's a lot more affordable than silk. And it's actually textured. Like our, the Invisifil and the Deco Bob aren't very slippery threads. Like they, if you feel it, if you run your hands on it, it's actually got a bit of texture and that just helps it like grip the fabric really nicely. And both of these are two ply threads. They just like melt right into the fabric. And so even with a piece with all these different colors here, you really don't have to choose the exact same color as your fabric, which you're used to using with the 50 weight because you often see your stitches when using a 50 weight. But with these lighter weight threads, you, it really hides your stitches a lot more. So you don't have to worry about choosing the exact same color to your fabric, which makes it a lot easier as well when you're choosing what thread to use um, next. Well, you don't, yeah, and you don't have to buy as much. You know, you can use what you've got on many different projects until the spool is all the way gone without having to to replace. Um, Karen's joining us online and she's asking Callista, how well does it iron? How well does it tolerate oh, the iron? Com completely fine. Like we've done tests where we just like leave the iron on Deco Bob and Invisifil for a very, 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 <laughs> very, 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 very long time. And it's like, that's a fun day at work when you're allowed to just try to burn yeah, things. We're just like product testing, but absolutely. I think someone asked us if they could microwave it one time. Like it's pretty good with for a heat pack. Exactly. I think that was was that your question, yeah. Sue? Because you like making. Let tell us what you and think. Bowl cozies. You like making bowl and cozies. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's no problem. It's not gonna like melt or anything and like affect your affect your seam. So you can absolutely use it under heat. And um, another great thing with these lightweight threads, while we're on the topic, is I don't know if anyone does any applique, but hand and machine applique are amazing with lightweight threads like Invisifil. And I often tell customers, I'm like, you know, you don't have to level up your skill, just change the thread and suddenly you look so pro because you can't see your stitches at all. So for example, like this is hand applique with Invisifil. 
and then we also did the same leaf with machine but just at a glance like you can't even tell one's machine applique and one's hand applique and, and, I think and that- you're so right about like machine applique especially if you're a beginner or you want to do something like a decorative stitch as your applique and if you're going around a curve sometimes it's not perfect sometimes you can re- and the thicker the thread the more that shake is going to show and so it is nice to use something that is going to be a little more forgiving especially on applique and you know you're not getting it right on the lines we do have a question um um about how strong like are we giving up the strength of our thread by reducing or by upping the weight No, and that's what I kind of touched on as well. With finer weight threads, it's not just about how strong the thread is, it's on its own. It's really how many stitches you're packing into like an area, right? So with lighter weight threads, you can really reduce your stitch length, which actually gives it more strength, especially in the seams or things like that. And you still get less bulk and you still see it less than using a 50 weight. So it absolutely is fine in terms of like strength and for construction and things like that. And what are the most popular colors? We're getting a a question online for Deco Bob and Invisifil. It kind of feels like you should just use white or gray or you know what I mean? But what do you think? Um, For me, I like to go with like neutral colors for sure. Like (laughs) I like to have something for like my cooler colors. So I might do like a grayish and then like a beige-ish for warm colors. It's always great to have off white as well and maybe something in the darker neutral range. But I actually tell customers, you know, like unless you're doing something that's like on white or black fabric, I tend to not go for white and black all the time just because it's kind of like on the end of like, the ends of the color spectrum, your eyes tend to catch those a lot more easily than like a more neutral color. If you ever get like pokies or if your thread shows in any type of way where you don't want it to. So I find the neutral colors tend to hide a little bit better than like the stark white or black. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Calista did touch on at the beginning that you can use these lighter weight threads in your top needle and in your bobbin it's it's no problem or you can use the lighter weight thread just in the bobbin exactly. um, if there's a, a a thread that you're really wanting to see um on top um maybe you could speak a little bit about uh yeah I, I do want to touch on this a little bit as well so if you notice we only offer our pre-wound bobbins in 80 weight yeah Pretty much if you ever see any of our samples or come to our booth or anything like that or 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 um see our demos and and anything we're always using deco bob that 80 weight in the bobbin because it's just good practice to use a lighter weight thread you know there's not many instances where you're like i want my piece to be bulkier or my seams to be bulkier like there's no real reason you want to be adding more thread than you need to so by using a lighter weight bobbin all the time it just hides better in the back it reduces your bulk your embroidery especially will feel a lot softer using an 80 weight. Your seams are flatter using an 80 weight. And especially if you move up into like the thicker threads as well, like those 12 weights, you you, 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 need, you need to reduce the bulk and not have like 12 weight top and bottom. Like you, you need to have like a lighter weight to help with those more specialty threads and like the metallics like I talked about. And a lot of people are really used to using like the same weight of thread top and bottom and they're just like oh but it helps the tension it helps match or something like that and I would say that's definitely a myth you don't need the same weight of thread top and bottom because if you think about it it works really well in like the 50 or 60 or 80 weight if you have matching threads but if you ever want to use a heavier weight thread think about using a 12 weight thread top and bottom that would be your machine would be like clunking and making all sorts of noises and not happy with you so I always say your threads are just kind of like holding hands on the fabric and like we are in real life we don't have to be the same height to hold hands we can be a taller person and a shorter person still hold hands and that's what your thread is doing as well and while we're talking about pre-wound bobbins you know we love Janome machines around here and we've got a big you know candy bar downstairs full of Janome bobbins so how do we rectify always using a Janome bobbin with 
deciding to buy a pre-wound bobbin? Maybe this is a question for Amanda or Sandra, but you know, are we okay using that? Is it just a universal bobbin that they're wound on? Um, so I know for sure, cause we have Janome's in our, in our studio. Um, I'm just going to quickly screen share one more thing, but I need to switch to a different PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. No problem. So just give me one sec while I pull up the other. Um... No problem at all. If you're just joining us, we're doing a thread education session with Callista from Wonderful. She's joining us live from Calgary. We are live at the new homemade headquarters in Kingston, Ontario, and we're talking about what threads to use for what job. And Callista has been great at telling us, you know, how about try, you know, deco bob and 80 weight for piecing? Um, what about, you know, a 40 weight uh, polyester for your embroidery, for example? Um, so do you, you want to yeah. just switch to the PowerPoint really quickly so I can mm -hmm. show you guys? Um, I don't know if you're able to see this. Yeah. I, okay, perfect. Yeah. So one is a machine wound bobbin. So something that you're doing at home. And the other is a pre wound bobbin. And you can see, like, even if That's it what happens like, to me, <laughs> even when you try your best, even when you try your best to get it as even as you can, and even with these newer machines and better technology, it still doesn't compare to a factory wound bobbin. We're using really big machines that are made only for winding bobbins as perfectly as they can be. And so, it really does help with your tension and things like that. Like I mentioned, it gives you a better stitch quality, not just the convenience. And because these are wound at the factory and they have 80 weight thread on them, they last a lot longer too. So there's probably going to be at least like 20 to 30% more thread on here than when you wind your own 50 weight thread at home. And I actually got to confess, like if anyone pulled that top drawer open up there that is labeled bobbins, it's just like the bobbin graveyard <laughs> of like thread that I've wound and either messed it up or I wound it for a specific project and then I don't need that anymore. Um, you know what I mean? And it's all like <laughs> just probably just 50 weight cotton on there. Whereas I guess if I did get a pre-wound bobbin and I used it for multiple projects and just kept using it and then got rid of the bobbin afterwards... Yep. My, then my little bobbin graveyard, you know what I mean? I, I have some really great examples of the pre-wands, especially with embroidery as well, because I know a lot of people focus a lot on that top thread for embroidery, but your bobbin thread makes a huge difference. It really can make your embroidery a lot nicer. So we split this teardrop in two. You can see on the left-hand side. Oh, wow. We did not use a pre-wound. On the right-hand side, we did use a pre-wound. Can you see how much more even those Yeah, teardrops? just sort of my eyes, like I was like, oh yeah, pink. And then I was like, oh yeah, huh. The right looks like the stitches are like longer. They're they're like smoother, they're more consistent, it's just like filled in better. And and we actually use deco bob on both sides, but one's just like a pre-wound of deco bob and one's like a self-wound. So it actually makes a huge difference. So it really is the deco bob on the self-wound too? Yeah, but it's like you can you can actually see if we use if we had an example with a 50 weight that's not deco bob in the bobbin yeah. it would be even more shocking the difference yeah. no no for sure for sure and you know we can show you the the what colors people were wondering like about popular colors that the pre-wound bobbins come in so um, I think we have a little uh I, I get yeah again oh that's the poly another one Karen, that shows the it's like package yeah that one Exactly. So again, like I would say like neutrals are pretty good, but, mm -hmm. but you know, just switching from using like a 40 or 50 weight in your bobbin to like an 80 weight, your, your stitches are actually going to look so much better, even if you use like a white color. And I'm saying like, oh, don't use white, like use a color because it, it actually fills a little bit better. But I'll show you if we can hop back to the power sure. point quickly. Here we did embroidery with a white 50 weight bobbin and then embroidery with a white 80 weight deco bob pre-wound. Do you see how much richer and fuller it almost looks using the 80 weight? Because you get less like pokies and things. It just like feels so much nicer. <laughs> Amanda Brown saying no neon pink. <laughs> Maybe we could request. Wonder feels pretty accommodating. <laughs> we, we have a neon pink in a, another thread line, but not in Deco Bob. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, we we know that the snow has. Oh, we have another question. Let's let's go to the audience for a second. Okay, Donna, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Yeah, in that example, was the was the bobbin the same color as the top, or was it a different color? Uh, for the pink one, we use that pink color, that pink bobbin here, oh, the oh, yellow. Yeah, the yellow. Oh, the yellow. Oh, the yellow. We used um white on. Uh, sorry, one sec. Let me just switch that. We well, used white for yeah, both. So we used a white fifty weight on the top part, and then we used a white eighty weight deco bob pre one in the bottom, just to show you. Especially because it, with embroidery, you know, sometimes we do get pokies and things like that. Like, I that's why I always say, like, don't use stark white or black, use neutrals. But even in this example, like, with the white, you still, like, barely see that any 80 weight from the bottom showing through because it's finer. You're, you're not going to see it as much. So it makes whatever you're doing on the top look really nice and, like, richer almost because you don't have anything coming from the bottom <laughs> affecting it and wow. like picking up bulk or making it bulkier or anything like that it almost makes the embroidery look nicer i feel like every few minutes i look over and i see people going like huh oh, <laughs> hmm. you know what i mean so th that's a good sign that people are picking up some some tips and tricks that you know maybe they didn't realize how you know choosing more than just one kind of thread or choosing more than just the color of your thread can really take your sewing from one level uh, to another level. What well, else should we touch on, Callista? Um, well, I mean, there's really so much. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I only, I only have one hour. <laughs> like, I, could I really know, it's very <laughs> true. It's very true. We could, we could talk about it all, all day. I think if we were to leave this session you know, with one thing for me, I feel like it's be brave and try something that you haven't tried before. Kind of get yourself out of the thread rut. You know, you've got yep. some samples of some different threads in the goodie bags that you've got at the door. We've got samples of Deco Bob downstairs. If anyone's wanting to try it when they get home um, or try it in the machines down here and, you know, give it a feel. And, and, you know, we're here to kind of help bring your sewing to the next level. Exactly. So I hope this has been, you know, informative. Um, and you can certainly find all kinds of different thread selections on homemade.ca if you're shopping or, you know, the rest of us can just mosey on downstairs and have a feel. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I actually have like a couple more samples maybe of Invisifil for mm -hmm. quilting because I know you said you had a lot of quilters with you today so I, yeah. I wanted to show you guys this as well. So sure. how many of you guys have done stitch in the ditch before? Yes. Yes. There's there's people that have done stitch in the ditch. Perfect. We live in the ditch around here. You live in the ditch. Well, now you Get can live in the ditch. <laughs> well, that's what we say too, because you know how many times are you do you get something like this? You get colors that don't match, that aren't close. There's darks, there's lights, and you're like, what color thread do I use to ditch in a situation like this? You know, when you're using like a 50 weight or something. Well, the answer is don't use 50 weight use a hundred weight. I'm not, I'm not saying never use 50 weight. I love how 50 weight looks. And it's, it's really about what result you want to see, right? It's not, I'm not telling you to like never use these 40 or 50 weights again. I'm just trying to let you guys see all the different varieties of threads out there and what a difference changing your thread can really make. So in, in this example, it is a really good idea to change your thread to something like lighter weight like I mentioned you're not going to see it as much so when you're ditching even you know in these both of these examples we purposely popped out of the ditch so then you know as it hap as it happens sometimes you know by accident or by purpose <laughs> on purpose in this <laughs> situation we did it on purpose so you can like see even when you pop out of the ditch with that hundred weight thread you barely see that it came out of the ditch. So, you know, we call this technique stitching in the neighborhood. So you don't <laughs> have to worry about staying right in the ditch or anything like that. But it, it it's a great way to like utilize these lightweight threads for situations yeah. like this. And here's sure. another example yeah, where you're see. building with, you know, different colors. I've got white background, but then I've got colored blocks. So what color do I use and do I have to change my thread every every two inches yeah, I really hate it when a different like a white thread goes through the yellow star like I I don't like that so again Invisifil is great for that so we actually did this test here where we have a white background we have a few colored blocks and we stitched a couple matchstick lines across 
um, this sample in different colors from light green to gray to light blue. You can see the green does show on the fabric a little bit on the white, mm -hmm. but look at the gray and the, the light blue. They totally hide even in the yellows and greens, like it totally just blends in. And that's kind of the magic of that lighter weight, hundred weight thread. So when you have a lot of different colors, you can just kind of pick one color and stitch across and it generally just like blends in and you don't really see even what color um, we put there. Like if I didn't put the spool color there, I think it'd actually be a hard time for everyone to, to guess which color we used here. And there's times where you have pieces like this um, where you really want the piecing to be the star of what you're doing. And you don't want like all this thread to be running through the lion's face and kind of disrupting the pattern. And also you have so many different colors here. Um, what color do you choose? Um, and so again, these lightweight threads like the Invisifil are amazing for situations like this because I'm gonna show you up close as you can see, we used one color for the entire quilt. And even on these close-ups, you can barely tell what color it is. It almost feels like it's taking on the color that it's on. That's incredible on the on that lion. I yeah. Know. That pattern's downstairs too. And I, I no one's made it here yet. So I was like, that kind of nice to see it come you to guys, life like that. You guys got to do it. The, the, actually, I, I haven't made too many quilts, but this was the first quilt I ever made. I yep. pieced it all with the Deco Bob top and bottom. And then I quilted this with the Invisifil on the top and Deco Bob in the bottom. And, and it was just magic to see how flat the seams were and to kind of really put my money or put my mouth where, or put my put the put my mouth where you know yeah just, I, I understand what you mean like I'm, what I'm saying and it really does um it really does show the power of these lightweight threads so I just used like a light gray like the IF718 um, mm -hmm. for all the quilting I'm just looking on um uh, wonder, uh, shop wonderful.ca. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you have a resource guide that Karen was asking for. Um, if you go to wonderful's website and you, uh, look under resources, I think it is, yeah. um, there is a chart that shows what thread to use for what job. I was trying to find the link there, but exactly. it's harder on my phone while I'm, yeah, yeah. you guys can go to wonderful.ca. Mm -hmm. Um, and so on that site, we have um, under products, I think it's like media and resources. Yes. So there's hints and tips for every single thread line that we carry, which will include bobbin size, or sorry, needle, uh, needle sizes and um, the applications we recommend for every different thread line. Um, as well, we also have a bobbin guide. So in case you guys have other machines besides Janome because pretty much every Janome is classified. We don't. Except, okay. <laughs> but for people that might have extra machines at home, you can right. always check on there to see mm -hmm. what size that um, your machine might take and you can check and, and buy the pre-wound bobbins. And uh, there's also color digital color charts of everything. So I always recommend people print them out when they come in. It's a great way to know what inventory <laughs> you have at home. You yeah. can like check it off because you know I find that a lot of people gravitate towards the same color so I always hear people buying the same color of thread over and over again because they don't think they have it at home and it turns yeah, out it's me it with the teal. <laughs> teal. so many teals so many teals yeah um is there any other questions that we should be asking Callista while we've got her here um it's been so great that honestly I think it's a wealth we could really talk all day and all night and keep going <laughs> tomorrow and still um, um, have questions about thread. But it really is about try one with what you're working on, some of the tips that you've explained, and then, you know, see how it works for you. I had someone come into the store last week who was doing a quilt similar to what you said, and she had white, black, gray, white, black, gray, white, black, gray. What thread does she put across white, black, and gray blocks that doesn't kind of ruin the other blocks? And I said, hold on. And I gave her two free samples of Invisifil in like a soft, soft gray. Mm. And about three days later, she came back and she said, give me some more. 
I mean, <laughs> I've already used it all because she didn't see it in any of the colors and she was really, really hooked. And then, um, yeah, so I, I thought that was a really great endorsement of like, that's what, you know, she was working on. And, you know, you're, especially when you're quilting it and she wanted to free motion it herself. Yeah. Um, and so often we're like, well, no, I'm not going to change that thread. So it is nice to know that you can, uh, you've got other options um, when you're wanting to do yourself. Yeah, Sue, what's... So, um, you yeah, you can. You yeah, can. You can. You, think? you can. I generally recommend like deco bob for like the bobbin for everything and mm -hmm. the reason is because you can use invisifil in the bobbin as well but i know there's like more newer newer machines that have sensors in the bobbins and things like that and i find that sometimes they have like just like a touch of issue like picking up how fine invisifil is whereas it doesn't have that issue with deco bob so and we use deco bob just consistently in like all of our samples for everything we know it works with like every type of thread on the top so I can like reliably say deco bob for everything, but Invisifil right. does work as well. I have a lot of customers that do use Invisifil um, for the bobbin also. And one little just tip, if you're new to it and you get it home, is um, it's going to feel a little different when you thread this, especially Invisifil and mm -hmm. deco bob, um, because it you're going to be used to just a chunkier thread. That's and right. especially if you're using your automatic needle threader, um, you know, you may need to just get a little feel for it, hold it at the top as you bring it through, because it really is very fine. Yes. And I would say like a lot of people with using different weights of thread are always worried about like, oh my God, do I have to touch the tension? And I always say, don't be worried about it. Like don't limit yourself on like, what you can use on your machine because you're scared to touch that tension like you guys have amazing machines like you don't want to limit yourself to like what you can do and what you can use on it like it's like getting a paintbrush and being told you can only use like watercolor and you can't use acrylics or oils mm -hmm. or anything like that like you know we're creating art and stuff and this is our hobby like you should be free to express and like use what you want so with tension i don't give people like a number to use with like threads but what I say is always test it out on like what you're going to be sewing on so don't just go into your scrap bin and grab like a single piece of fabric and test it and expect it to be the same as like your quilt sandwich if you're going to be sewing on a quilt sandwich then test it on a quilt sandwich if you're testing it for piecing then test it as if you were going to be piecing some scraps together because that's why that's the best way to tell if you do need to adjust your tension. And if you're finding that your top thread is getting pulled to the bottom, then you probably want to tighten your top tension a little bit. And if your bottom thread is coming to the top, then your tight top tension might be a little tight and you want to loosen it up a little bit. So it's just kind of like knowing these things and just understanding your machine. And you should just really play with it and see when you change it, what happens, because then you won't be so afraid to like, try different types of thread and go outside of your comfort zone. Absolutely. 100% we should be like testing it and trying it. I'm putting a link um, to the uh, Wonderfill thread that we've got on our website um, in the comments here. So if you're looking for it, you'll be able to easily find it. Maybe I should press copy, not try <laughs> to paste nothing. Um, there we go. Paste, post. Um, so you guys can find it easily and we're always getting more in. So we've sold a lot of it today. So if it's sold out, not to worry, it'll be here in another, another couple days. We'll, we'll replenish it. Um, so you can be, you can be watching for it. Karin, is there any questions that we missed online as we were going through? Okay. Put them up. What happens, um, when your machine has auto tension, mostly with the tension, just leave it alone. Just, just quit fooling around with the tension, you guys, right? Like, I think auto tension, it's automatic. Let the machine worry about that. The only time you need to really worry about your tension, if it's suddenly become way out of whack, and that probably has more to do with your timing than your tension. But um, once you start messing with the tension, you're kind of always messing with it. If you haven't messed with it, just leave it alone. Um, I, I mean, I think like, don't be afraid. There are times where you might need to adjust your tension, but it's not, it's not a scary thing. I think with auto tension, it should generally work. But if you find that um, it's not working with auto tension, it's, 
not super common, but like you can always turn it off and adjust it yourself. Like I mentioned with those tips, you can generally be able to figure out like what you need to do if you need to like tighten it or loosen it or something like that. It's also important when you're using a Janome machine, especially one that you can, is a dual machine that goes from sewing uh, to embroidery, is to make sure you're using the right bobbin casing. So mm. Janome machines will have a bobbin casing with a blue dot, or they'll have a casing with a yellow dot. And so if you're using embroidery and an embroidery thread or a 40 weight polyester or even a rayon, you want to be using the uh, bobbin casing with the yellow dot. That's going to automatically put you at the right tension in your bobbin for embroidery. So if you're having a problem and you're trying to embroider and you're ten in, and th that's the black case that you put your bobbin in, that bobbin casing. And if it's if you got the blue dot or no dot, then you might not have the exact right tension for what it is that you're doing. Yes. Um, right? I think there was another question again. I think someone missed it earlier, but they yeah. asked again if Deco Bob was microwave safe. So I said yes. Don't worry about using my uh, Deco Bob um, with heat. Or anything like that. And there was a question also about if the 80 weight was just for piecing and general sewing. So absolutely, yes, it's great for piecing. Um, you can use it for general sewing, like quilting and things like that as well. But actually, um, use it all the time for your embroidery if you're using like a 40 weight on top because it's going to make your design a lot softer. But what I was going to say is you can actually use the 80 and the 100 weight thread in embroidery as well, because you can actually do like lettering, monogramming, it's going to give you like more detail. Um, and you can do smaller designs that still look really crisp and nice. And um, also um, freestanding lace. It's fantastic for freestanding lace as well. That actually feels soft. Yeah, this one... Um is crunchy. <laughs> We've this freestanding lace in case you're not, you don't know what it is. It's when you are using thread only uh, for your design and you sew it into water soluble stabilizer. And then with some water, it washes away and you're left with just your thread design. Um, so it's a really beautiful technique. And this one could definitely be much, much softer um, for sure. Um, there was one other question. What did I want? Uh, what happened? Oh, do you guys yeah. have sergers in your store as well? That's what I wanted to ask you about because so <laughs> often it was the serger question. So often we're hearing people say that they don't necessarily want to buy the old school, big, tall serger cones when mm -hmm. they're changing to a color. Um, so I like that, you know, your the polyfast and even, well, a lot of them can be used yeah. in your serger and you can just have, it doesn't have to be a humongous cone. No, and there's like a lot of different types of thread that you can use in your serger. Again, like it depends on what you're doing, whether it's just going to be in a seam or if you're going to use it in a decorative capacity. But what I was also going to say is with the Invisafil and Deco Bob, those can be used in your serger as well. When you're doing like a hem on like finer weight fabrics like chiffon, organza, tulle, things like that, pairing those lightweight fabrics with a lightweight thread is really nice. That's, that's, a, that's a very good tip for sure. For sure. Okay. Well, uh, Calista, you've been a wealth of information. I think we've kept you longer than we were supposed to, but I really appreciate you doing this for us. I know everyone watching at home that couldn't come today in person appreciates being a part of some of what's going on. Keep uh, your eye on your phone or your device because we've been going live uh, throughout the day. Uh, Janome's been going, they're here too. Uh, Michael from Janome's in the house. Amanda's in the house. So if you're on the uh, on Facebook, you can be checking the Janome Canada and the Janome HQ Facebook pages for additional lives uh, that have been happening here today. They're demoing the Serger, the uh, M7 with the circle attachment. We've been demoing the long arm that's here. <laughs> and also Michael's been doing some fabulous demos on the Continental M17. So uh, go on back to their pages and you can scroll back in ours too. And if you're not here or able to be in person, you can certainly take part uh, online. Calista, thank you so, so much thank for being you. here. Um, <laughs> we'll have to do this again because there's always, we always need these kinds of refreshers. For sure. I hope you guys all feel a little bit more educated today. Thanks for tuning in. And if you have any more thread questions, like let us know, reach out. We should do another talk because we love sharing thread knowledge. And we really hope 
you know, after hearing this, you'll be excited to try all these different threads and wander out of that 40, 50 weight category and really see what yeah. a difference changing your thread can make. For sure, for sure. We have a homemade event coming up in the next few months. Um, we do one every year and we're going to launch that soon. And um, we're going to we're going to try to get Callista back. For that. So <laughs> Would love to be. We hope to see you then. Thank you so much, Callista. Bye. Have a great grand opening day. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's tuning in from home. Uh, we appreciate your support too. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.